Now for the video you've all been waiting for, casting. Kai asks, how involved were you in the casting process of Bones and All? Interested in hearing about your input and decisions. Now, there may be a few exceptions to this, but for the most part, an author has no say at all in casting or any of the other important decisions around the film adaptation of their work. And the happy fact of the matter is that I would not be recording these videos, I wouldn't be on social media, you would not be hearing from me at all if I were not positively over the moon about every single decision that Teresa and Dave and Luca and all the rest of the team have made. Kai also asked, before Timothy and Taylor were chosen, overall, how well did the candidates match your vision of the characters? And the answer is that I didn't know about any actors who were being considered before that deadline article dropped at the end of January. Uh, but I tend to think, this is pure speculation on my part, but I tend to think that Luca only ever had Taylor and Timmy in mind. But again, purely speculative on my part. So far, it's September 2021 as I'm recording this, you only know that Taylor Russell is playing Marin and Timothy Chalamet is playing Lee. You know which other actors are in the film and you've made educated guesses, but you don't officially know who's who yet. So in this video, I'm only gonna discuss Taylor and Timmy, even though I have effervescent opinions about every actor who appears in this film. I got to meet Chloe Sevigny on set. It was so surreal to be able to chat with her and watch her work. I'll be sharing more about character inspiration, Sully in particular, on the extended playlist, so sign up for my mailing list if you haven't already. Kai asks, what were some requirements in terms of characteristics, appearance, etc., you had for the actors who were to play Marin and Lee? It's so funny, so Hollywood, how we have these two beautiful humans playing the lead roles when, in my imagination, Marin is a mousy girl. She's always trying to render herself even more nondescript, trying to avoid attracting attention. And Lee, I saw as generically good looking, but again, kind of unremarkable. Just this guy with dirty blonde hair you might find working in his uncle's auto repair shop. But because all of the essential characteristics are interior characteristics. It doesn't matter if Timmy's doing the emo version of Lee, that physically he's very different to how I pictured him because the only essential things to know about Lee is that he has a finely developed sense of justice despite his problem, and he'd do anything to set his sister up for a safe and happy life. And Marin's vulnerability sparks that same protective instinct in him. So Kai, you asked, how do Timothy and Taylor compare to the characters they will be portraying? And the answer is they're both very different than how I pictured these characters, but the film versions of Marin and Lee are gonna be way more interesting than the versions in my head. Kai also asked, what were your first impressions of Timothy and Taylor meeting them as the actors who would play characters you had created? Now my set visit happened at the very end of filming, so Timothy had already wrapped, but I did get to meet Taylor. We had several brief but substantive conversations and I absolutely adore her. Her real life presence is as warm and engaging as what you see on the screen. She's so subtle and yet you feel exactly what her character is feeling. And even after she would deliver this excellent performance, she'd work even harder on top of those first couple run throughs or those first couple takes. She seems to have a very clear sense of her own potential and she knows when she's not quite living up to it, even though everyone around her thinks she's already doing a stellar job. And she is. Mallory writes, This is random, but it means a lot to me that they chose a woman of color to portray Marin. While reading your book, I related a lot to her personality, and to see Taylor in the role makes me feel seen even more somehow. To which I replied, Mallory, that is not random. That is precisely the opposite of random. And then Megan replied, The fact that they chose a woman of color as a main character and love interest is very, very important and meaningful for me as well. So let's talk about implied whiteness within the context of this story. I, as a white writer, could not, or at least should not, have written Marin as a young woman of color because white writers need to be extremely careful and thoughtful and deliberate 
about who we choose to otherize in our fiction. I thought this through as I was developing Marin's character, and all of the monsters in the novel are white. That was deliberate. That said, I was really excited when I saw Taylor in Waves knowing she was gonna play Marin, and I can't say this for sure, but I'm reasonably certain that Luca had the same reaction when he saw her in that film. He wanted her for Marin. My concern about otherizing a black female character is still there, and I do feel a responsibility to continue talking about this, but all things considered, this role is just too good an opportunity for Taylor. I feel sure that everyone who has worked with her on this film hopes and believes that this is a role that will catapult her onto the A-list. Zoe writes, I came to your book as a Timothy fan and I am so excited to see him in this role. Were you familiar with his work when he was cast? If not, have you watched any of his films since? Everyone I have spoken to that has read the book is very excited and can definitely picture him as Lee. Can you easily picture him in the role? When the news dropped at the end of January, I had only seen Timothy and Lady Bird actually. So since then I've been watching his and Taylor's other films. As of now, I have seen him in Call Me By Your Name, Little Women, Miss Stevens, and The King. And though I appreciated all of those performances, my favorites are Call Me By Your Name and Miss Stevens. And to answer your last question, Zoe, and to elaborate a little bit on what I've already said, because Faith also asked, have you imagined Marin and Lee as the actors who have been chosen? Once I had seen each of them in their best known roles, it was easy for me to imagine them as Marin and Lee. And now, of course, I can't go back to seeing them as Mousy Marin and Lee, the you know generically good looking mechanic. Like I said, I only got to meet one of them, so this impression is only half informed, but I really appreciate how natural both of these actors are. I love that Taylor often chooses not to cover up her birthmark, and I really do think that a large part of Timmy's appeal is that he's not just another Ken doll. Heck, in one role at least, he is literally the boy next door. I find it kind of fascinating, sad but fascinating, how many negative comments I've stumbled upon regarding Timothy's looks. Seems to me a lot of dudes are resentful of this person who is helping to redefine 21st century masculinity just by being himself and choosing interesting creative projects. And that's very threatening to men who are emotionally disengaged, living by rote, by cultural script. Toxic masculinity, unfortunately, is the water they've been swimming in their whole lives. So I totally see why so many fans find Timothy's androgynous beauty refreshing. I do myself. And I think both of them represent a much more, a much healthier, more authentic standard of beauty in Hollywood. And I hope, you know, other people in the industry will follow their lead. They're both very intelligent and empathetic actors, and I could not be happier that they are the ones bringing my characters to life.